Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today we are going to be making a photo album slash journal and I am using some basic supplies which I'll go over most of them in just a moment here along with some beautiful products from Wild Orchid Crafts. That's what we will be embellishing the cover with and this is going to be a very simple journal that we're putting together. It, this is not a mini album tutorial. However, it is the basically the same way how I do put my mini albums together. But if you're looking for an actual tutorial, I have a very detailed tutorial that I've done. I will link that down in the description box and that goes into great detail of how to make a mini album from start to finish. Today, for time's sake, I'm going to be going through this rather quickly. Um, again, if you want to know how to make a mini album, check out the tutorial down in the description box. I will, however, go over measurements and just quickly what I'm doing here. But don't be discouraged if you can't, if you've never made a mini album and you can't follow along with this one, go over to that mini album tutorial. Then if you want to, once you learn the basics of how to make the mini album, come back to this video and follow along with this one. So let me just quickly show you some of the supplies that I've used today. I've used a paper trimmer and I've Try to get as much of this ready as possible, again, just for time's sake. Um, so I, I'm not showing that on camera, but I've used a paper trimmer. I used my scoreboard. I used some double-sided tape. I will also be using some wet glue. I'm using Fabri-Tac. I have a ruler and scissors. I have my bone folder. And for my covers and spine, I'm using some medium weight chipboard. These, the size of the album I'm making is eight and a half by six and a half inches. So I needed two pieces, one for the front cover and one for the back. The spine, I know I need it to be the same height as my album, so I cut it to eight and a half. I have not cut the width down of it yet because I don't determine that until I do my hinge. So I don't know the size yet of my spine. I will put it up on the screen here for you to see um, once this video is completed, but it's eight and a half tall. As you can see, I've already added some double-sided tape. I also have a piece of Tyvek envelope. This is a used piece. I, I have my sister save me scraps from where she works. You can purchase this from an office store. This is not necessary to do. It will help the strength of your album. Again, that's called Tyvek. I have a hinge piece that is cut to seven and a half by seven and seven eighths. And I'm going to do six pages. I've already prepared it. And I'm giving myself a one quarter inch gusset. If you've never made a hinge for a book, again, check out that mini album tutorial. I show in great detail how to do it. But I scored it on this one here. I scored it half inch, half inch, quarter inch, half inch, half inch, quarter inch half inch, half inch, quarter inch, all the way to the seven and seven eighths. And the two half inches that I have is gonna give me one flange to hold one pocket in my album. So therefore that's gonna give me six pockets. I have an inside cover piece that's, that's going to cover up some of my chipboard. This is cut to eight and three eighths by five inches. I may cut the width of this down. I haven't decided. For the covers to wrap around the covers of my book, I have two pieces that are nine and a half by eight and a half. And I'm not going to worry about how long it's going to be at this point. We will cut that down. Again, if, if, if you've never made a mini album before and none of this is making sense, please check out that video and then come back to this video and you can follow along once, once you get the hang of that. I have six pages. Normally I make pocket pages, but these I'm not going to be making into pocket pages. This is going to be a very simple journal that will also hold photos. So I'm going to have six pages. My pages are cut to 12 inches by eight and a quarter, and I scored them on the 12 inch side in half at six inches. So we will do one of these on camera. And then I also have my papers I'm using from the beautiful collection by Simple Stories. I have my inside cover pages, and these are going to be my journal side of the book. So we'll go more into detail. And then this is going to be for the front of my album. I have two pieces of chipboard, black, 
because my accents in this album are going to be black. One of them, the largest one, is cut to 3 and 3 8 inch by 3 and 3 8 inch. And then I have this piece here, which is three and a half by three and a half, I believe. And then I have a three by three piece of black chipboard and then a two and three quarter square piece from the same collection. And I've added some beautiful titles to them. So we'll get to all that later once we embellish the album. So just to start out, I'm going to score my page in half. And again, this is on the 12 inch side. I'm scoring it at six inches. I'm going to fold it and give it a good crease with my bone folder. And now this is going to be our page that adheres onto the binding portion. So the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and work on my hinge. I will be going through this quickly, so um, if you have any questions on how to do it, please refer to that other video. But I'm going to, I've already added my tape as you can see, and you only add the tape to the two half inch pieces. So I'm gonna fold that over. Actually, I'm gonna go back to this. I like working from this direction. So as I'm working, I crease it to make sure it folds nicely and that, that way you don't get any cracks. I'm using a smooth black cardstock that is 65 pound weight. And I do go over all that in my mini album tutorial as well, the type of paper that I use. So I'm folding this back and creasing it as I go. Like I said, I do know that I'm going through this quickly. Um, being that this is not a tutorial, I thought it would be okay to go through it quickly, but please check out the tutorial if, if you're interested in learning. So this, in my inside pages are not going to have a lot of room. There's not going to be any embellishing. I'm making this very simple for someone to maybe write a little story about the photo and then on one side put a photo. I'm making this a very simple journal that holds photos. So now I need to go ahead and add my tape to all these flanges and that's what's going to hold our pages on them. So I'm adding tape to both sides. Again, that is what my page is actually going to be adhered to. And I know I go through this rather quickly, but um, I'm just simply adding it down the entire length of it and I'm using Viva. Las Vegas Stamps Miracle Tape. I absolutely love the tape. It's similar to score tape. It is definitely just as strong. And I like to use this for my mini albums because I know that they won't come apart then. So I'm using the quarter inch tape, burnishing that down, making sure it's adhered down very well. And now I'm measuring the back to see I forgot one there, so I'm just adding it. I'm going to measure the back to see exactly what size I need to cut my chipboard to. I like to make my hinge first if, if it's a different size album than I've never made before. So I like to do it this way, measure exactly what I need. And I believe I ended up with a two and a half inch wide spine. So now I'm adding the half inch tape to the back. You want to add, make sure that your tape is covered over the entire back this is what's going to be sitting in your, your, on your chipboard inside your mini album. So I ended up cutting it to two inches. So it's eight and a half by two inches. Here's the covers, nine and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to overlap them again with a half inch 
piece of tape and that tape is going to be my guide on where to line up my paper. And if your paper is too long, you can cut it down in the end. So now I'm adding tape to the entire spine piece, the chipboard piece. I use a lot of tape as you'll see throughout this. It's because I want to make sure that everything is going to be adhered down very well. Like I said, I, don't, I want to make sure that this holds up very well. So I added my spine piece to the piece of Tyvek. As we mentioned, this is not necessary, but it definitely helps the strength of your album. I'm removing all the tape backing and now I'm using a half inch piece of chipboard that I cut myself just as a guide to make it easy. You want to leave a half inch around your chipboard covers to be able to wrap your paper around. So now removing the tape backing, I like to add glue to the center of my chipboard as well. That way it makes sure that the cardstock is not bubbled after adhering it down. So I'm using the Fabri-Tac and again a guide that I made myself. I explain more about that in the mini album tutorial. That gives me the gap between my spine piece and my front cover and also my spine piece and my back cover. That's going to help reduce cracking of an album. So I'm using my brayer and burnishing that down. I want to make sure it's adhered well. And this is where you want to cut off any excess. There's, there's no need to have excess bulk when you wrap your covers. So again, I'm leaving a half inch piece around the entire perimeter of my chipboard. Here I'm using the perfect trim ruler and mitering my corners. I'm marking them off with a pencil before I add my adhesive. This is going to just help me get a nice corner. And now I'm going around the entire album with my tape. I'm doing this before mitering the corners. That way when I miter the corners, the tape goes all the way up to them. You don't want to cut all the way up to that chipboard or else you'll see your raw chipboard once your album is covered. So I'm just kind of bending around my cardstock, getting it where I need it to go. I'll remove the tape backing. I'm using my Tim Holtz paper piercer to remove the tape. Now I'm really going to press that down well, burnishing it with my bone folder. And you want to tuck in those corners so you don't have pointy corners when you fold them over. So I'm just kind of looking at them tucking them in, make sure I'm happy with them, and then folding that over. Really pressing it down well with my bone folder. Now I'm going around all the edges. Again, just making sure it looks really nice and it's creased down well. So here I'm adding tape to where my spine piece meets my front and back cover. I'm using a piece of paper, eight and three eighths by five is how I have it cut now, but I end up cutting about a quarter inch off the bottom of that. It's just a little bit too long. It didn't match up with my front and back pattern paper. So as you can see, I cut about a quarter inch off. I'm going to add tape around that because I want to make sure that that is adhered very well. When you're opening and closing your album, if it's not adhered down, it's going to bubble. So you'll see me add tape all the way around and I'll double check it against the tape that's already on the chipboard to make sure that the tape is completely covered that piece because it will fold up. It will bubble up when you're opening and closing your album if it's not. So you'll see me even add glue to the center of that. And that's where I was checking it to make sure that the tape will cover the entire piece of that cardstock. So I'm just going to eyeball that. You won't see most of that once it's done. And now really press it down and take your time and fold it up, which you'll see me do here, do here in a minute. Here is why I like that fabric tack. Some of it seeped out and I just use my glue eraser and it just comes right off. Super simple. You never see it. Now here I'm taking my time. It doesn't look like it on film because it is sped up, but I'm very carefully creasing those edges there using my bone folder and I'm not pressing too hard because you will cut through your cardstock. So I'm just lightly bending that up and now I'm going to adhere down my hinge piece. Again, eyeball this. You can measure it out if you want. Give yourself some pencil lines. I just kind of eyeball it, make sure it's straight. 
Once I'm happy with that, I really press it down and I move all the flanges back and forth to make sure that they're adhered down well and that they move well. That way your pages will move well. So here's where I'm going to add my pages. I'm just basically going to sandwich them over that and press them down. The very first page that you're putting down, you really want to take your time, make sure it's down well, because you're going to use that as your guide for the rest of the pages. So here I could have left a pocket. I chose not to. I wanted to keep this journal very simple. I didn't want a lot of elements to it. So I'm going to adhere it completely together, taking my time, pressing it down. And now that's going to be my guide for the rest of the pages. I'm going to use that as a guide. I'm only taking off one of the tape backing to one side of it till I get it where I want, press it down. Then I will open it as you see, add my glue, remove the tape backing, and then adhere the entire thing down. And like I said, you have the option to leave yourself a pocket if you wanted to. So I do the same with the rest of the pockets, take my time, really make sure they're glued down well. And if there's any glue seeping out, use your glue eraser and get rid of any of that. You don't want any of that shine on there. So I was really happy with how that turned out. Like I said, I gave myself six pages. Now I'm going to add the front and back cover. The collection, as I mentioned in the beginning, is Simple Stories Beautiful. I did add those sentiments and the hearts that you see on the front and back. I love to have beautiful sayings throughout. And now I'm just kind of deciding which side I want my journaling spot to be and which side I want my photo spot to be. Those journaling papers I've designed myself. Again, added some beautiful sentiments on each. I added that pink piece of paper, it just kind of, otherwise the black sits on the black and it's hard to see. This will help you get a, an easier um, border, a, a more straight border because you're able to see a little bit easier. So now I pre-cut all my pieces so they match. And here's the base piece that's going to be on the um, side. It's seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then I cut two pieces, six and a quarter by four and a quarter and six and a half by four and a half. And when they all lay down together, it's going to give me a photo map perfect for a six by four photo. And here I'm showing you, I even cut out a piece of chipboard six and a quarter by four and a quarter, slightly smaller because each page is going to have a little bit of dimension to it. I love the look of that. So again, I added my chipboarder, excuse me, my chipboard piece rather. Slightly smaller than six and a half by four and a half. I said six and a quarter by four and a quarter, but I meant six and a half by four and a half. Then my black piece of paper, six and a half by four and a half. And then my white mat, six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So again, when the photo, a four by six photo is placed, it's going to leave it with a slight border. And I love the look of that. This paper collection is just absolutely beautiful. So here's a quick flip through of the book. So again, it leaves room for a photo and journaling. Very simple. Adding down my spine piece. And I had to do that off camera. I put it on my lap to be able to see it very well. And now I'm going to add my front and back cover, leaving myself a nice black border. I love the black with this paper collection. So as you can see, what I do is I just remove the backing to just the top portion of my paper. This helps me, this allows me to move it around to get it centered exactly where I want because it still slides because you have the release paper on the back of the rest of those pieces of tape. And then when I'm happy with that, I press it down, add glue into the center, and then really press it down well. And I can get it very straight by doing it this way. So here is my front focal piece. Again, adding those matte pieces on black chipboard. I want to give it some dimension and just matting those down, centering them as best as I can.
and then I'm going to adhere that down slightly to the right because I want my flower cluster to go up the left side of it. And now I'm back a couple days later to finish this. I'm adding some of that beautiful flat back pearl trim to the side. I will have all the products linked down in the description box that I use from Wild Orchid Craft the links to Wild Orchid Craft's website. So I hope you stop by and check it out. You can also stop by my blog for more information on that as well. The links will be in the description box. So I'm pulling out several different flowers that I thought would work well. I don't use all of them, but I did pull out some chrysanthemums and magnolias. I pulled out some white leaves, some beautiful lily flowers, and some of the new lotus flowers. They're really pretty. They come in several colors. So I just kind of scatter them throughout, see what I like. I wanted a mixture of both the pink that would go with the paper collection, and I wanted a little bit of yellow in it as well. So I used a couple of the yellow chrysanthemums. And now I'm just using my hot glue gun and adhering it down. I hope you continue to watch. I, I'm just going to finish embellishing the cover. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And I hope you've enjoyed today's project. Check out Wild Orchid Crafts. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day today.